what's going on? Uh, got some very special guests today, Mark D. Valenti and Rhiannon Nicole. Is that correct? Rhiannon. Rhiannon. Nicole. Yeah, basically. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me. Let me uh, zoom this down one second. I got to erase some stuff. Trying to get this white off my face as much as I can. Um, oh, I can hear somebody's feedback off there. And I wonder if it was me. How about now? I don't know, but I can put mute in the meantime if that works. Do you hear that? I don't hear anything. Somebody's. Uh, oh, How about now? I suck. Is it Mark? Don't know. Let me hold on. Hold on. Talk again. I got it. Hear him. I got it. It was me. Uh, the YouTube kicked in at the same time. Was playing at the same time. <laughs> I was like, "Shit, I don't know what to do." <laughs> An idiot. Um, so, Mark, let's. We're gonna start with Mark because the audience, you know, some of my audience doesn't know you guys. So mm -hmm. let, let's start with Mark. Let's start with. Um, you're on mute right now, Mark. There you go. Let's start with who you are and what you do. Yeah, thanks. I uh, appreciate that, Peter. Uh, Mark D. Valenti, producer, actor, sometimes writer, and uh, and all sorts of horror movie stuff. And uh, I know we're talking about uh, our film Six today, which is an anthology horror film, and uh, it's made up of six different segments. So I'm uh, very much involved with that. Uh, Rhiannon can talk about herself, but uh, we actually act in each one of those of mm -hmm. six things those different all characters six. each time that's right yep yep all Excellent. six all right we got real quick uh 80s horror man hello and steven hello thanks for joining uh rihannon uh -huh. okay go ahead please tell us what your involvement is with the film and, and what you do all right so i'm actually co-owner of no regrets films which is doing the six shorts for the anthology um Right. I'm helping writing. I'm acting alongside Mark. Um, I'm also an actress in other things as well. And I am a book author. I didn't know that one. Yeah. <laughs> How many books have you done? I have four total. All right. What's their themes? So they are paranormal, kind of romance, but kind of not. So they're more like young adult, but it's like new adult. So it's a young adult for an older audience. Okay. I got it. It's got like vampires, werewolves, gypsies, curses, like all that stuff. Fun stuff. Yeah. Right. Rhiannon's <laughs> being a little bit humble there. I think she, uh, you know, that's a lot of stuff that you wrote there and it's uh, out there and about in the world where people can access it on Amazon, correct? They can. Yes. So it's Broken Halo. It's a series. So Broken Halo, Broken Halo Blood Curse, Broken Halo Witches Game. And then I have a standalone book called His Soul to Keep. And that made me an international bestselling author. There you go. <laughs> oh, took Mark with a little little nudge, and then it went. Well, I get so yeah. nervous on these things. I'm like, I don't want to talk about myself. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It. You're just humble about it all. So I uh, just wanted to kind of, yeah, as you said, Peter, a little bit of a nudge there for her to talk about. It worked. That's what a director does. Thank you. <laughs> um, let me go back to this. So the 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 first real question is the six. So the sum um six the sum of your fears what is that about it's an anthology series is from what we talked about and if you could explain the six different ones i guess and just the whole idea of what you're trying to achieve yeah i mean i can start off and i'll invite rhiannon to uh talk more about it of course i keep thinking of the uh Fleetwood Mac song every time I mention her name, of course, as most That's people do, you know, it's spelled different, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we've, we've already filmed the first two of the segments. Um, the first one, of course, was Extreme Dating Game, which I know, Peter, I don't know what happened to that file. I was, you know, we have a, we have a uh, minute and a half trailer that's out there, which I know Rhiannon was instrumental in putting together. Uh, Extreme Dating Game, of course, was about um, a uh, person, myself, who was a bit off their rocker and uh, has his own sort of community access show. Uh, and he invited uh, three women on the show who he was trying to uh, screw over and basically uh, put them in a situation where they were trying to kill each other, basically. So yeah. that was the first one. I directed and, that one. She did. Yes, she did. And then the second <laughs> one was Uncivil War, which is really set in the politics um, where there was a... Uh, let's say some stereotypical Democrats and Republicans uh, kind of having some controversies and uh, there's some violence there, which we again filmed and it's finished. And then the third one, of course, is uh, Frida, 
which is Evil's Origin, which is the one that has um, Bill Mosley and Kane Hodder in it. <laughs> and then we have four, five, and six, but uh, we're at the moment going to be filming uh, Frida in August, actually. Yeah. Okay. So and excited. we'll get into the Kane thing in a minute. So the the it's being produced by No Regrets. Is that I'm gonna call you Re? Is that is that correct, Re? Yeah. Okay, that's great. And you guys have collaborated before. Um, we have kind of, so, um, I'm partnered with Scott C. Sanford. And so we created, so we kind of worked together in the past and then we created no regrets films to continue on and kind of start our own thing. Yep. And so then the anthology is what we've started with. That's us. That's, you know, we've only done together. Okay. And then Mark is involved in all of them producing and acting and, um, input with writing as well. So I got the six uh, scrolling on the bottom now. So this, uh, this is, you guys had many pictures and posters, which featured a lot of you read, but this is my favorite because this one shows all six films. Yep. And the little side boob, a little side boob. Don't yeah. <laughs> I'm also a model. I'm a published model. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Mark, if you could, again, give me the order of them one while the fans can see. Yeah. Them. And uh, I actually just got out of the shower, so I'm a little bit sweating right now from the heat here. In Pittsburgh, it's always very humid, so excuse me for a, a moment as I say that. But yeah, the order of them is Extreme Dating Game was the first one. And again, I'll invite people to search for that. Uh, again, I, I wish that file wasn't corrupted. Uh, Extreme Dating Game was the first. Uh, Uncivil War is the second. Uh, Frida, Evil's Origin is the third. Um, the, Lithia, uh, the Lithia Park Killer is the fourth. Uh, the fifth is the last scene of Market Street, which is actually one of my favorites. And then um, Redwoods is the sixth. Excellent. Yeah. So they all have like a slasher killer type elements to them. Okay. Is, is it like 80s, 90s theme? We're kind of doing like 70s, 80s. So like Extreme Dating Game, that was more like the old, wasn't that in the 70s? Yeah. When, yeah. Like, when did that happen? That, it reminds me of that, yeah, that uh, that old show, right? With the uh, what's that show called? With the extreme with the, or with the Spanish flea song. I feel like that was always on there. Yeah. When was that one? I can't remember. It was called the Dating Show or the Dating. I think it's called the yeah, Dating Show. Dating Game, right? Um, I'm going to ask everybody who wants to know if it's a '70s horror movie and there's nudity. Is there going to be '70s yeah. bush in it? That's that's no. the question everybody <laughs> wants to know. There will not be. <laughs> All right, because that would be weird. <laughs> That would be a little weird. You know? Yeah, no, we're not doing that. See, the 70s, I like the, I love the color gradients in like the 70s movies, you know, like House of the Devil, yeah. um, stuff like that. So I like the color a even, lot. Even it's Halloween. Even yeah. Halloween. yeah. Yep. And I like the clothing. <laughs> well, and Frida, or not Frida, um, Last Night of Market Street um, is uh, kind of a homage to um, Travis Bickle and Taxi Driver. And it kind of is uh, definitely a very 70s gritty type of show where it's about somebody who's uh, struggling with their own sanity as they're in San Francisco. Um, and that one, of course, I play conservative talk show host and I kind of move the story along as the narrator. But it's definitely very much a um, connection to the uh, taxi driver sort of um, approach, which, of course, is definitely very 70s gritty drama as well. Well, so Mark, let me let me see your skills because I don't see you as a conservative. So let me give me a, give me a good line or two of your conservative character. Because <laughs> <laughs> we actually did a, a trailer for this, Rhiannon. I don't even know where that is at the moment. Um, uh, definitely yeah. very uh, stereotypical, <laughs> you know, suspenders and tie. I can't remember if I wear a bow tie or whatever, but it's uh, I'm basically calling out the police force of San Francisco for not doing their job, and it's the liberal media that is actually causing a bunch of issues and putting up the lies out there into the community where we're covering up the whole situation with the homeless killer and uh, stay tuned to my show on there and uh, <laughs> watch out for that liberal media is all I got to say. Yeah, which is which is in the movie, I guess, the truth, right? Because the media is trying to cover it up to a degree. Is that That's, correct? Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, yeah. Brianna, wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. Cool. And yes. then we have this one here. I like that one also. Thank you. Who, who made who took the photography for these and who made these these posters? Posters, um, pictures. So um, the so the pictures were taken here locally by Roberta Wells with um, red light photography, and then the posters has kind of been a mixture of kind of everybody making them. Um, we have so many of them. 
I don't know if I'm like who all to mention. Oh, it's, all, it's all right. Well, if you don't want to <laughs> just skim through a couple or you knew that one, that's fine with me. Um, hold on. We have some comments. I guess my this hit a nerve. Personally, uh, Clint Myers, personally, I'm a little disappointed we won't get the full 70s experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. imagine talk about is he talking about the bush being in the park? Yeah, I mean, imagine if you said that oh. I'm gonna throw this thing out like 12 feet. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, Mark Benesset, hello, Peter, Mark, and Rhiannon. Um, yeah, the, the 70s, it's a new age 70s. <laughs> <laughs> 80s horror man posters look good, they do. And then, you guys, yeah. I don't know if you guys know Carl Covington. Um, I love mm -hmm. it, brother. Carl was in, um Vengeance one, Vengeance two. He was in Rosebud with me. He's okay. from the Seattle area. Nice. Hello. He's well, that was great that he was able to tune in tonight. Yeah. So, <laughs> um. So I, I, we have a special guest coming on in like two minutes. So we're gonna stall until that happens. Um. What was the drive for the this series? Um. You've done horror before. You've written before. I don't know if you. I think you've directed before, Mark. Mm -hmm. What was the whole idea to? To, for this series and and the boldness of it of doing six yeah I, that's a great question i'll invite uh, rihanna to comment as well um i think it's just again going back to the 70s uh aesthetic but also aesthetic but also um just the idea you know when i look at american horror story right which every season it comes on there's a the same cast basically they play different parts you know uh in uh extreme dating game you know i was the uh unhinged uh top you know show um owner and of course mm -hmm. if you saw the uh video uh it's um definitely a lot that's revealed there and in uncivil war i play actually a very um stereotypically liberal person by the way uh and very much um it's just the idea of i think in each segment was playing different parts i mean i, I will ask uh, rihanna what she thinks about that because i know you've been very much involved with the writing aspect so i don't know if you had anything that you want to say about it yeah so some of them were like previous scripts. Um, a lot of them are scripts, you know, Scott is a really good writer and he has so many ideas and so many scripts. Um, so we kind of, some of them we've combined, we came up with ideas on our own to make different segments. And then we are like, we have so many ideas. Let's just, you know, and we, they're all going to basically be shorts anyway. So let's just combine them all and just make an anthology full feature. Cool. How did yeah. you guys meet? So you're me and Mark or me and Scott. You and Mark, sorry. Through this, actually, it, we were doing a we did a Zoom meeting, right, for Last Saint yeah. Market Street. How That's did right. you see one? Of, like, did you approach him? He approached you. How did that work? Scott knew you. Yeah, so I worked with Scott on um, the film Axe to Grind. Uh, I don't know if the viewers are familiar with the first Axe to Grind, uh, starring um, shoot Debbie, Debbie Rashawn, right? Which was 2016, where she was sort of this character, I don't know how familiar people are with it. And, and Scott wrote that and worked with her very directly. And she was um, this character who was sort of like an aging screen queen who was being usurped by the new blood. And she uh, got a little crazy and ended up uh, killing a lot of them. So there was a second uh, act to grind with a two in it that I was uh, involved with, which actually uh, Stormy Daniels was her mainstream directing debut as she reminded me about whenever i saw her on set and i said hey congratulations for your main your uh, directorial debut and she reminded me that she's directed like 80 films already but uh <laughs> actually in the mainstream uh but no that was that was where i got a chance to work with stormy and um that's how i met scott because i was working on on that um that uh, film mm -hmm. excellent um yeah. back to the fans flesh team and productions it's all about networking that's 100 percent the truth i don't yeah. think we, any of us have like success without networking with other people especially like across the country mm -hmm. yeah well said because rhiannon's in boise and yeah. i'm in pittsburgh so uh you know a couple hours time zone and and uh, peter you're on the east coast new haven connecticut there you go so and uh in my film um people i put in that i, I some of them i played with the friday 13th the game that i oh. became friends. Oh game the duke uh jay quint broden the the african-american gentleman plays the duke in my film he's from detroit i met him through the game and we became like best friends we talk every day that's so cool it's that yeah awesome. horror does that more than anything i think it's yeah definitely and it's crazy who all knows everybody it's so it's nuts you're like oh yeah and like ever like how you know you work with cody newton here yeah that's yeah. nuts 
Yeah, I, I talked to him every. I just talked to him all day today, going over the script. Of how are we going to get the shots? What angles we're going to go with? He's phenomenally talented. Yeah, so if you guys ever need a DP, even a director? He's he just is so good at everything. It's amazing. We we have a behind the scenes for Rosebud, and it really goes in depth, like how much everybody did and what he did, and just mm-hmm. always happy working 16, 20 hours. We worked seven 16 hour days, and the last day was twenty one hours. Oh my gosh! He never complained. He was okay. dancing the whole time. Just wow. no arguments, just a different kind of crew. Because, you know, most people are kind of pissy on a set. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, We're not, but we... we yeah, no, it was me. So everyone's like, this is, this is different. Everyone's like in love with each other. I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, everyone hates each other on the movie set. They're just going to get a paycheck. I'm like, why? Well, I don't even know how that is, you know? Mm-hmm. So so back um, to the film. Obviously, gore. Um, uh, mm-hmm. Tons of gore. Um, I'm assuming a killer, at least one killer in each of the six. And then some fans want to know nudity. Is it going 80s style with nudity? Well, <laughs> it's a good question. I So three of them are still kind of being written. So I don't know about that part. Um, in Frida, I can't say that. Well, there there's a little bit of nudity. It's not like full on you're standing there ripping your shirt off but there are some scenes where there will be some slight nudity okay and i'm assuming you're speaking of yourself um or is it mark or is it mark (laughs) that's what i'm saying any opportunity to show off i'm happy to do that so you know whatever so it's it's like if i say what's going to happen it'll give away like this really cool scene i don't want to say but it's not like full on what you're expecting nudity wise it's what do you call it um what's the name of it implied but still kind of a little bit got it got you never it. know i mean it could always change i don't know right i mean <laughs> i mean extreme dating game you know again uh again i wish we could have the, the trailer showing there's some no. making out scenes or whatever but there's no nudity in it and on civil war mm-hmm. there's actually not really an opportunity to have any nudity no. in that way. Oh, no, I don't, I don't, I don't. my rosebud had zero nudity, zero sex, oh, zero, yeah, zero yeah. drugs, zero nudity at all, which is so rare for a Friday Thirteenth film. It just didn't fit. Mm-hmm. So I insert it to insert it. Yeah. Oh shoot! Yeah. Yeah. Civil War has nudity in it. I forgot about that. The whole pool, the whole hot tub scene. Oh yeah, it's not me, but yeah. yeah right. It's so like, there yeah, you there's go. like one topless scene. I totally forgot about that. Yes. Yeah, there is I a topless scene. I did as well. There so go. there you go. For your interested <laughs> listeners, there is some nudity in the Uncivil War. Uh, <laughs> The Dude, reason why I ask, that you'd be surprised if, if you see our fan films that we put out for Friday 13th, literally like a quarter of the questions are, is there nudity? Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> and I got shit for not having nudity in mind. Oh. And I was just like, dude, it doesn't fit. Like a girl's just going to be in the in the office, just rip her top off. It just doesn't, it doesn't make yeah. any sense. You know? Yeah. So, <laughs> of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we got one more comment. So, 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 yeah, I guess depending on the segment, there may or may not be uh, nudity in it. Yeah, I guess. So I'm going to be covered in blood is what it is. So I don't know how much you'll actually see. Exactly. Right. That was right. So, so Ree, you have a fan. I like Rhiannon's tattoos. Pretty cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And that's only what he can see. I'm assuming there's more. Oh, yeah, I'm covered. <laughs> yeah. I was checking out your Facebook. You're they're on your legs, too, correct? I do. Yep. On my thighs. I have my stomach, my back's done, my here, my shoulders, arms. How about you, Mark? Uh, I am completely untatted, uh, <laughs> but you know, some of those records are sealed at the moment. So, uh, from from what I what I hear, so yes, you know, I have, it, I have zero. What about tattoos. you, Peter? Dude, zero. I grew up like a, a bad boy fighting and with a bunch of juice monkeys and going to the club <laughs> and going to the beach and. I used to be a bodybuilder and I'm the only one with no tattoo. And I used to say this joke all the time. We would go to the beach and everybody would be jacked up by their minds, tattooed from their neck to their toes. And I look different because I was the only one that didn't have one. <laughs> like in their attempt to like out cool me, like I'm like, Hey, I'm different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause I didn't have any, <laughs> but I don't know. It was just yes. what, my parents would never have allowed it. And then when I got older, it was just like, I don't know the way I saw it was like, tell me if I'm wrong, whatever is the coolest thing in, becomes the biggest thing out so like a tram mm-hmm. was in then it's out then a tribal's in then it's the most out it always yeah. seems like there's a cycle of that like where you're at one point you're behind right i don't yeah. know the way i always saw it no oh, good, yeah. 
there's always the joke, right, about people getting the, uh, especially the Japanese uh, yeah. working yeah. on their arms, and all of a sudden it's like, what does that mean? It's like means like mint uh -huh. jelly or some random thing. Like that. <laughs> yeah. But even, even whatever it meant, if it meant power, like you just roll around, you think there's Japanese people with power written all over them? It's weird. <laughs> yeah. That's know? right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. No, it's. A, I no. can confess, back in the day, so I was 17, I did get the Pamela Anderson barbed wire, but barbed I covered wire. it when I got older. Um, I was like. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Cause I was like, mom, I want to get that so bad. And she took me. And then years later I was like, shit, why did I do that? That's, what my, that's my point. That's my point. Yeah. I probably would have got a tribal, you know, <laughs> and then I'd be out. Yeah. At least you can cover them. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's just finding something that uh, is going to be meaningful to you for the rest of, meaningful to you for the rest of your life. Right. So like if I was going to yeah. have a tattoo, it would be sort of like a montage of David Cronenberg's body horror stuff. I think just images from, oh. you know, all the uh, shivers, uh, all, all the fly, all those things, just to kind of say that would be the, the um, out of respect for the work that he's done. So you're a Cronenberg fan. What, what Jason was he in? Oh, well, Jason, he was in Jason X, of course. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, of course, of course. Big, yes. Big, big Friday he's... fan. So I oh, right. Of course. Of course. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Put me on the spot, but yes. <laughs> I was supposed to have a special guest, but they're not on, so remind me to beat them up. Um, <laughs> uh, so we're going to jump into this right here. So the first time I noticed the 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 movie in the anthology was when this these articles went up. And I, and I'm uh, for those who don't know, uh, let me just – I got to shut this banner off, otherwise we won't see it. So, bang. Yeah. I'm sitting there online and it yeah. says Kane Hodder and Bill Mosley and Debbie Rashan join new anthology horror film from Rue Mork. And then, you know, like a day later, bang, um, mm -hmm. six Kane Hodder and Bill Mosley starring in horror anthology featuring six slasher segments from Bloody Disgusted. I'm like, man, you can't get a better one to two back to back and or the two actors that are involved with that. I'm pretty good friends with Kane. Like I talked to Kane, mm -hmm. I hang out with him in his booth. He, you know, we've become pretty good friends over the years. And um, seeing that was awesome because especially somebody I know. So I know how hard it is to get these big names because I mm -hmm. in the beginning when I first tried, it was like, what? A fan film? An indie film? Who are you? You know, it was tough. So <laughs> congratulations, both of you, on getting yeah. them. And walk us through the process of that and how you got them. And, and what episode are they going to be in also? They're going to be in Frida. So they're going to be in the next one that we're doing um, in August. Awesome. So, yeah. yeah. And where are you guys shooting all these? In L.A. Mm. Yep. <laughs> expensive yeah well, yeah yeah <laughs> and credit goes to scott sanford because he's the one that negotiated the deal of uh getting kane and uh and bill mosley of course too so he was uh the driver and getting them on the um on the film and i think like you said peter i think it just really elevates what we're doing uh yeah. the first two again was happy to do it. it was an amazing time um rihanna and i worked very closely together for like 18, 19 hour days on, on yeah. both of those. Uh, but uh, this, this I think, is really just going to elevate our our, um, uh, our approach with this third one with them. Both yeah. Of them. It really has. I mean, I don't think you get no disrespect. I don't think you get those two articles without them. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That, that was like the big bang, you know, the big. Yeah. Hit. So. That yeah, we were like, oh, my gosh. When the articles came out, we were like, holy shit, this is so cool. Like, this is real. It's weird because it like doesn't feel real. But it's real. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's always a, a fun. Th it's like, you know, movie making is not always fun. Mm -hmm. uh, for people who think it is, it's it's not. And you end up fighting with people that you like or love. And everybody's got an attitude and a little way you got to deal with them. Some people are divas. Some people are assholes. But, like, the fun part, for at least me, was landing, like, the bigger names. You know, like, we mm -hmm. landed Dash or Vengeance and CJ Graham. And then, you know, I landed Laura Park Lincoln and Kevin and... and mm -hmm. uh, spiritus and terry kaiser and it was just like those were the cool moments you get the like you said i would call like jason brooks and sean like dude we got it can you believe it you know and it was like <laughs> a great moment which i'm sure you guys have shared so yeah. um, it, it's it's like the highlight and then people don't people see that they don't see the the bad but yeah no, no agreed with that um i had the privilege uh last september to work um zoe cavanaugh who's uh from ireland she actually d uh, directed uh, demon hunter and demon hunter time to kill and I had an opportunity to work directly with Lisa Wilcox um, as an example of somebody that I think just, it, again, it's those types of moments where you work with these like icons directly in scenes directly with them. And you're like, holy cow, like this is just amazing. So I've had the privilege over the last few years to work with a lot of them. 
especially for horror movie fans, those uh, horror movie icons. It's been a, it's been an amazing uh, trip. I know Rhiannon has as well, of course. And, yeah, Rhiannon, the next, same to you. How was it getting these people and or working with them? Um, Kane and Bill? Or, or just any that you worked with in the past too, but besides that, landing on, landing, they were finding out you landed them. It, it's just like incredible. Like I'm saying, you know, it's like even, even this probably sounds stupid, but like even on um, my podcast, like when you get certain names, you're like, wow, like that's insane. And you get to talk to him and stuff. Cause we had, you know, like Eddie Munster and we had um, Larry Zerner, which I'm sure you've probably talked to before. Yep. Um, and then we had a uh, Chris Duran who was in Halloween H2O. And it's just, it's crazy. Cause you see them in the movies and you're like, you love them. And then when you have them, you're like in person with them or you're talking to them, you know, through the screen, it's like, it's just, holy shit. These are people I love watching and you get to actually that's interact cool. with them. It's insane. Yeah insane I, I we ate uh dinner with shelly at uh Scarefest. me and Ryan. Oh, nice. yeah, he's just so cool you know what i'm saying and he's a hollywood yeah. lawyer it just fits like what he's yeah doing. and he's yeah. so nice super nice super nice um hold on i think one. that's shocking too is how nice a lot of people are that you don't expect <sighs> can i give an asshole? well there's also ones that aren't but <laughs> can i give an asshole story yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, bring it on, bring it on. Um, what's her name from everybody's told the same story and i don't give a shit because she was so bad that i don't really give a shit um what's her name from the exorcist uh, oh um, uh, linda blair holy shit <laughs> so, terrible? I, it, so i go to rock and shock was a convention here in massachusetts um one stayed up from me but they stopped they closed so i went there uh, i was hanging out with kane i was at kane's table and he, he was right next to her so he's like i'm like kane i gotta I'm going to go over there. He's like, okay, Petey. So I got up and I went in the fucking line. I had a, that box set that came out a couple of years ago with the famous crab walk in it. It was like a tin box set. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, it's, it's literally my favorite film. So I'm like, I'm going to go to her. I was in line. I was like 10 people out. And the guy, I forgot what it was. The guy was with his son or his daughter. And he's like, hey, can I get a picture of just you and her? And besides us two together and she's like that's another forty dollars and he's like but it's just my daughter can you do it she goes I, she said just like this i don't give a shit i'm not here for you. i'm here for the money it's forty dollars i was like oh what my gosh fuck? i got out of line i was like fuck this yeah. got back in line she comes to another show i forgot what show it was in massachusetts like a couple years later a year or two later i get in line again I get like maybe five people from her. The guy's like, okay, you're up soon, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I see her talking to them. The guy's like, hey, can you come around the booth, take a picture with us? And she's like, I'll do it quick. Hurry up. She's like, I don't really got time for you fucking fans. And no, 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 no. You know? And then somebody like tried to pay with like four tens instead of like 220. She's like, oh my God, four, what, what am I going to do with four tens? And I was, again, I got out. Of the and the guy says, where are you going? I go, dude, I'm done. That's it. Game over. Like, I, like yeah. he knew, you know, and, and this funny thing is over the years, I met a couple of people that were at those shows and they did the same thing. They had the same experience and they left. I was like, man, yeah, and nothing yeah. against her. Everyone has bad days, but two times. And yeah. You don't do anything else. I mean, you should be happy about that. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So and your fans are who made you famous. So you'd figure you'd be appreciative. Yeah. Yeah. hundred um, percent. Release dates. What are the beginning? Uh, you said one's already out. What is the release dates for each of them? And or if you want to just say when the finality of, of all of them is going to be. I think it's going to be in 2024 because we still we don't have like a set date when they're going to be released because um, we still have what four more that we have to do. So after Frida, we're going right into Lithia Park Killer, which is going to be directed by Debbie Rashawn. Um, and then the other ones after that, I'm not sure dates as far as filming especially with locations and, you know, whether it's winter time and, you know, so we don't have dates. And so you both are flying out to LA six times or five more times. Well, they're not all going to be in LA. So the first one was here in Boise. Um, Uncivil was in Oregon. Frida's going to be in LA. Um, Lithia Park's going to be in Oregon again in Ashland, I believe. And then Last Saint... I think that'll be California and then Redwoods are going to bring that back to Boise most likely. So it's kind of mm, 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 all over. Yeah. Does that go again? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, gonna talk to you. Boise, we have an Afghanistan scene in laugh coming up and uh, you tell me Cody Newton, my DP said, dude, there's a lot of Boise. that looks like Afghanistan. 
And I'm like, okay, because oh, I'm obviously yeah. not flying to fucking Afghanistan. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, he, so maybe when I'm out there, I'll see you. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, because so I think there's like the sand dunes and stuff out here. I'm pretty sure. That's what he was saying. So mm-hmm. we can figure out something from there. I mean, Definitely. it'd be nice to represent the East Coast at some point, but I guess uh, all these uh, things are being shot on the West Coast. But that's uh, well. I mean, maybe we could do Last Saint in East Coast. Maybe, but it's supposed to be set in San Francisco, so maybe not. I, you know, we can like fake it. Pull off anywhere else. Yeah, that's, I guess that's true. Yeah, just we the hills do, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And the, we can like, do the interior somewhere else. It's yeah. actually worse than New York. My buddy lived there. He's like, "Yeah, I live in a studio. It's like twenty nine hundred a month." I'm like, "A studio, like one room." And I was like, yeah. well, "What? How does anybody survive out there? It's crazy." I don't yeah. know. It's super hey, expensive. Again, you know, going to represent Pittsburgh as the, uh, of course, home of the living dead, right? Uh, George Romero, yeah. Tom Savini, everything else like that, all filmed yeah. out here. So you know, I want to, of course, plug that. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, he's a great. Have you met Savini? Yes, actually, I have. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, he's uh, he, of course, has his uh, school out here, right, where he does his yeah. special effects, and I had the privilege um, because I actually work in healthcare to uh, teach on the medical side of the same Douglas Education Center that he uh, teaches on with with his uh, special effects school. So I had a chance to meet him a couple of times. Have you met him three? I haven't. No, I've worked with a couple of his students. (laughs) He's a great dude. I met him in a mad monster party in Arizona. Me and him and Kane had dinner. And uh, yeah, he he thought I was nuts. And he like, I met him and his, his wife's like 40 something years old from Australia. Oh, and he's got to be late seventies. And then there's pictures yeah. on my, so we hung out, whatever. And then the next morning I got up, this is back when I was lifting and I went to go to the gym and there he is. And I'm just like, he's like, Hey, let's take a picture and we'll pose. I'm like, what? I was like, I, I was like, <laughs> I had a heart on. I was like, you want me to pose? With you? And he's like, yeah. And so there's a picture. It's on my Facebook where we're posing. Dude, the dude lifted up his shirt. He was like 72 then. He had six abs. Damn. Um, holy shit, dude. This guy, he's, <laughs> he's a great athlete. If you ever look at him, he used to do backflips and, all kinds of stuff. Right. Yes. I want to do backflips. Let me ever since I watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I was like, I've always wanted to learn how to do backflips. I used to be able to do them, but I'm too old and hurt now. So <laughs> back to the questions. Uh Ree, what was your very first tap? <laughs> My very first one was the barbed wire. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Has since been covered. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh Debbie's a pretty good director. I loved Model Hunger. I didn't know yes. this. Great uh, film. Clint Myers does a, a podcast, Hammondville Horror Podcast. Him and his buddy Don, they do a great job. You guys should hit them up. They probably would uh, have you on. Awesome. Yeah. Be great. Yeah. Here he is oh, again. Yeah. Sip sounds like it's going to be awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Clint. Really Christopher, Christopher Inlow. Howdy, Thanks. everyone. <laughs> do you know Christopher? I do. Yep. We've worked together multiple times. We've done podcasts, we've done movies, we've written together. I've known him a long time. Great actor. Uh, he was in, I was originally in the project Voorhees and I hung out with him at the Hope C- Cemetery that's in Friday 13th, part one. And then we mm-hmm. became friends after that. And I watched Voorhees and he nailed it in there. Oh, so, yeah. Chris, pretty he sure, has a, has a part in my new film, Laugh. So, uh, I sent him the the read for that part. And I'm pretty sure we're going to go with him because his, he can, oh, his range is amazing. He really involves himself. Oh, in yeah. the character. Yep. He's going to be in six as well um, in one of the segments. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Peace, small world. <laughs> yeah. Productions. I can't wait to see you. F- the film, you guys definitely will support you all. That's great. Oh, thank you. I nice. love everyone on the screen. Thank you, man. Love you too. Love uh-huh. you too. Look at the well, picture right there with the long hair. Look at him. That's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, and, and Chris, you know, in addition to being a very talented uh, actor who's able to do backflips as well, he's, <laughs> uh, he's, definitely, he's definitely a very. Um, enthusiastic person who's been very supportive and posting a lot on social media about six. So I just want to call him out for um, all, all the uh, positive uh, press that he's brought even to what we're doing. So yeah, I think that's, and that's what you want, right? I mean, we talk about working with people in, in the film industry to have somebody who's just very enthusiastic and out there promoting. So I just want to, of course, call Chris out for, uh, for all the stuff that he's been doing for us. And, and actually you too, Peter, for that matter, you've been very promoting it, promoting of everything we're doing. So. Yeah, Christopher is the most loyal person you will ever work with, and he is the best director that I've ever worked with. Wow, yeah, yeah. Um, back to the point, great point. Thank you for saying that, and I agree with you on the Chris thing. Um, some people kind of talk it, and then some people walk it. Some people yeah. talk it when it's about them or their project, and they want something back, and some people just live it. And I hope mm-hmm. the thing that I just live it because I mean, I, I'm so lucky that I do what I do. I quit my job, I don't know if you saw my last internet, I quit a big time paying job to make movies <laughs> and, and do content and do all this just because I love it. 
So, so I, I don't I never see people as competition. I never get mad at people. Like it's just we're all making films. We're all in it together. We're all going to stumble together, and we're all going to yeah. succeed together. This, that's always when you go to cons. And I know, Re, you know this. That's like mm-hmm. that mentality. You go to a concert. Man, I got fights in concerts. You go other places. Everyone's got their own little cliques. You could be at a concert. I used to be a bodybuilder sitting next to a guy in all black Metallica sitting next to a little girl uh, that's a, with ponytails. Like it's so cool mm-hmm. the amount of people from walks of life that go to the horror conventions. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Um, 80s Horror Man. I think the movie Six sounds interesting. I'll be sure to check it out. Thank you. Thanks, and yeah. then Clint Myers again. Thanks, Pete. We're supposed to talk to Misty Wagner tomorrow. Oh, Misty. Yes. Cool. She's affiliated with you guys? Uh huh. Okay. Yep. Yep. So she's um, she's acting in them as well, and I executive producer Mark. I'm yeah. kind of wrong on my technology sometimes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she um, played a part in uh, on Civil War without giving mm-hmm. a spoiler. I know Rhiannon, you had a very uh, pivotal scene with her, so I yeah. want to press give that away. We had an intense scene. <laughs> you got me all excited. She's great. Yeah. Um, so this is the big thing that I want to touch on for you guys because this is me. I've probably done seven of these, so I understand how it is. Bang, the Indiegogo. Oh. So uh, I understand the stress of it. Uh, I've run seven different Indiegogos from A to Z, and the time and money and effort put into those is a lot that most mm-hmm. people don't understand. I started two years ago at Laugh. I'm still shipping stuff out. Um, <laughs> so I, it's on Indiegogo. It's it's a little different on Indiegogo because I want the fans to see it. In the comments, I put the links for it, but it's also six horror movie on Indiegogo. You'll see that Mark Valenti. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're at 102 mm-hmm. backers, 4,400. What is your goal? Is it 10? I'm sorry, I forgot what it was. Uh, yeah, it is 10, actually. Um, yeah, and again, I want to thanks for putting that up there, Peter. I want to, yeah. of course, thank everybody who participated, whether it was the $6 holla thing <laughs> or the IMDb <laughs> special thanks, or uh, some people actually got uh, some voice in the film and just kind of getting the mm-hmm. perks and. You know, as somebody whose background is not film originally, right? Again, healthcare. I got my start by participating in a what's the other one called? Not not uh, Indiegogo, but the other one. Kickstarter. Go fund, or wait, go find yes. me for sad stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah so Kickstarter okay. just by on a whim, saying, "Hey, yeah, I want to be an associate producer on a film," and got connected with um, uh, one of my favorite people in the industry, Bianca Crespo, who directed the film Freak. Uh, she's in Philadelphia, and that's how I got my start. So I, I think that's a great way for people to get started. Sometimes, especially uh, if you don't have, you know, gone to school for film, basically, or have those connections. So I think it's great. It's a great place. So I, I really appreciate personally the amount of support um, from people that I've never met before, and just friends and family members who are like, sure, let's support the film. So thank you for putting that up there. Yeah, thank you. No, no problem. We'll put it up one more time before we go. And I, I like my interviews short. I hate being boring and dull. We're going to get to that little dog on your lap in a second, though. But, All uh, right. Yeah. I'm a dog lover. Yeah. Uh, so am I. I'm not a cat lover. I'll tell you the truth. I'm Don't not either. Me. I have two and they're dicks. Yeah, I don't understand <laughs> it. So real quick, Re, I, somebody mm-hmm. explained this to me because my brother's got a cat that's a guy cat that's real cool. And my mother's got a cat that's a guy cat that's real cool. And in my whole life, my mother used to have girl cats, and I'd go to people's houses, and there was girl cats, and this is no sexist thing. But a guy who was a cat groomer said, dude, every cat you had a problem with was a female, right? And I go, yeah, you're fucking right. And he goes, every guy cat's kind of cool. I go, yeah. He goes, that's how they are. They're just fucking standoffish like that. They, they want to be yeah. mated. They like want to be in their own world. They're just little bitch divas. I'm like, you're fucking right. Yeah. So I got to say, yeah. some of the guy cats are okay. Yeah, the guy ones are cool. Yeah, I have two girl cats, and they're both kind of assholes. Like they're nice to me, but they swat at people when they come in. They're they're bitches, but they're so cute. Like I love them, but they're they're so bad. <laughs> I a girl in Boston. I used to go there over the weekend. She right. Her what was the name of the cat? Phoebe. And uh, this was an ex fiance of mine. That little motherfucking bitch would like. You'd have to go upstairs to go to the room. She would fucking hide like in somewhere on the side of the stairs, like on a windowsill or some shit. Yeah. It'd be dark. And fuck, no, jump at you. Fuck, hit you. Oh, would shit. jump on your fucking head. I'd sleep in her bed at night <laughs> and wake up. And I would fucking go up, go on the fucking, the, the lamp fucking post and jump off and jump on my head and scratch me and wake me up. That, like, oh, gosh. That was okay. Like, that was normal for the cat. Okay, so, mine don't do that, but. Yeah, those little they're motherfuckers. Kind of they're doing, like, fucking pentagrams and, like, got, like, crow's feathers <laughs> and blood and shit. Those little fucking evil fucks. 
I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm a vet tech and it's like, I'm not a huge cat person. Like, I mean, I'm not mean to him, but I prefer dogs. If I could have like 20 dogs, I would. Tell us about, I forgot where I was even going, but tell us about the little guy on your lap. His name this is. This is my dog. Well, one of my dogs. This is Dahlia. Dahlia. <laughs> <laughs> so she is my little like soulmate dog. And she's very, very, very attached. So I take her with me everywhere. She goes to work every day. Um, she has seizures, so I'm very, very protective of her. Okay. Sorry about but, that. Yeah. It's she's she's doing good. But now I'm all like, oh my gosh. But yeah. <laughs> Dahlia, named after the black Dahlia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so back to this. How many more days are left, uh, Mark and Ray? Um uh, I, I think 20? it's a, yeah, twenty nineteen or twenty. Um, but I mean we you know, I think with you know, we might extend it as well. Yeah, I guess it's not a while till we get everything finished anyways. You can go to in demand, in demand, and uh, it'll keep going. Oh, okay. Are you familiar I've with never that? done Indiegogo, so I'm like, I don't know how it works. When it ends, it'll ask you, do you want to end it or go in demand? And then when oh, you okay. go in, in demand, it stays the same. The only thing it does is it breaks down how much you raised before the in demand and then after. Some people go in demand for a year. Oh, oh okay. Oh, you cool. Just, and you can add perks. Nice. All right. Yeah. If you had a flexible budget, you have a flexible budget, right? So, yeah, I mean, so again, first and second segments are already finished, right? And the third segment is funded fully. The whole idea of doing this was just to sort of um, try to help with uh, completing the fourth, fifth, and sixth ones a bit. So, yep. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it, it, it's flexible, right? If I'm correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. As far as I know, I think I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not an indie, like, I don't understand Indiegogo that well. Uh, so <laughs> make a goal that you have to hit the goal or all the money goes back to the fans. Or you could put flexible oh. where if you don't hit it, you can keep it and still make the, the film. The oh, TV. okay. Yeah. I mean, the plan was for us to, it, it's, yeah, you're right. Actually, there is, there are things that I've been involved in the past where if you don't, if they didn't make it, then the money goes That's back. That's not the plan. It's whatever's put toward um, what we're working on is, is uh, like you said, flexible. Yeah, I believe it says flexible on it. Now I'm thinking of it. Right, right, right. Yes. Yeah, Scott and Scott and Mark are good at the Indiegogo. I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an interesting experience, that's for sure. Next but, time yeah. you have one, I mean, not to sound like a dick, but I've done so many. I know what works and what doesn't. Just run it by me. I could easily give you some pointers. Awesome. Thank you. Know, you. Like, yeah, no, but like breakdowns of what like people sell shirts, right? Well, the shirt costs you ten bucks. You sell it for twenty. You ship it. Mm -hmm. You made seven dollars. You didn't make twenty. Right. You know, yeah. people don't understand. Like DVD costs you four dollars. If you buy five hundred, you sell it for twenty five thirty five. You make thirty dollars. You ship it for three ninety nine. Your percentage rate is seventy five percent GM. Things like that that people don't know. Oh, I'm going to sell this and that. Like, no, you don't want to sell that. You know, you don't want to make money. It's not that you raised twenty grand. It's how much did you make on it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying. It's You're right. Also, I'm in sales, so that whole hour was in sales. So that whole aspect is just is every day for me. Um, so let's all right, we're gonna wrap yeah, I'm it bad up. at math, so I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're gonna wrap up before I'm gonna wrap up, we're gonna put this banner right here. There you go. Um <laughs> so before we wrap up, uh, <laughs> I have to be a dork somehow. Um, yeah, I want two, two questions. One, any other stars or big names or alumni coming in that we don't know about yet? Um, and then also just finish the cap off. Tell us about the film. Tell us what's coming out. Thank your supporters. So who's coming on? And then your final say for both of you. Go first. I, I don't think we can share any uh, but else that would be coming on at the moment. Let's just say if that's revealed, it, it could be. be. Could be. Okay. Yes. It's <laughs> yes. There's a again, horror horror movie icons are involved with all sorts of things, and uh we can't reveal at the moment if anybody else is gonna be involved in future uh segments. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think right now we're just like relishing that we have Kane and Bill. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> right. Yeah. So give us your last two goodbyes, and then I'm gonna wrap it up with a little bow, and we'll go from there. Thanks for coming on. I had fun. I appreciate yeah, it. Thank you so much. So yeah, um, we do have a Facebook group that'll have like all the updates as we get them and as we can share them. So um, it's the six Facebook group. It's uh, posted on me and Mark's page. Um, 
Scott's page. It's pretty much everywhere on my Instagram. It's it's everywhere. So all updates will be on there. And if we have people getting cast, it will be announced. <laughs> yes. And, and at some point when we, because a lot of people are asking about um, future castings. So that will be announced as well too for the, for the other segments. I think that's there. I, I guess the bottom line again, Peter, thank you so much for your support and having us on the show today. I, uh, we're, all horror movie fans so like we're this is definitely something we're passionate about it's not just like oh, we're gonna be doing this film about whatever like we're all horror movie fans and so obviously Irene and i have talked many times about the bill and kane factor like we can't even believe it but i think it's just we're, we're just all horror movie fans and there's a lot of passion behind this whole project so we're very yeah. appreciative of all the support that we we've received from people yeah thank you yeah very much. And I'll wrap it up with that back to you guys. So so as an indie filmmaker, there is struggles and stresses and pressure and stuff that most people don't know. But I, I'm so lucky that we are so lucky to have a following of fans that support us. So, I mean, the fact that, that Mark and Rhiannon got Bill Mosley and Kane Hodder deserves your support. I mean, I know how hard it is to get names like that, how much money it is flying back to L.A. and back in Boise and everything. Mm -hmm big money that people don't see they see you raise them out and they think that's it that it, that's one fraction of what it is it's yeah. it's much more than that so please when you get some time and you get some money jump on to their their indiegogo once again we are gonna throw it on uh right here one second i'm not great with this thing yet there's so many things right here which is indiegogo it's six horror movie check it out real quick what do you guys have on there for um for perks i'll let you do that mark Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, we have just even the basic uh, $15 IMDb special thanks if somebody wants to sort of get uh, support us, but, you know, get recognition for that, which obviously adds to people's credentials out there. And then up to we have the uh, poster, yeah. um, not the poster, the, the picture in the film as well, yeah. or the or the music in the film. So, yeah, we have act in the film. Um, we have like digital copies of DVD. That's right. Um, your name on everything. I'm reading this, by the way. <laughs> no, thanks for pulling it up. I'm uh, you're, you're more prepared than I was about it. So. Associate <laughs> producer, executive producer. So we have quite a few that kind of fit everybody's budget that they can do. Did you say people were still, um, you were still filling spots as far as like reading for spots or just the act in the film spots? The act in the film spots. Okay. Um, I'm not quite, so how... I, I meant like you didn't have spots open that you're still looking oh, for no, no. they act in the film spots. Okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah. Thanks. So there might be like some surprise uh characters added to the films and That's right. for, yeah. for at least the third segment, right? I mean at some point we're gonna be casting for uh the fourth and fifth, which will actually be open on oh, yeah. this is you know the perks. That's what I meant. So people still have a chance of oh, oh yeah. Right. Yeah. The third segment, everything is cast except for these perks. So people could do it that way. Right. And then the fourth, fifth and sixth, there will be open auditions for some of the other yeah. um, things that we're trying to cast for as well. Awesome. Yeah. There'll be a lot of open spots. Let me know when you do the open spots. I'll take it and I'll put it everywhere. Oh, cool. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. you. So awesome. if, you need, if you need a meathead, maybe I'll read for one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> An old meathead. Uh, <laughs> Cool. So thank you guys so much for coming on. Hopefully this helped out. Hopefully the Indiegogo gets a little bump and uh, viewership and 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 uh, people following you and all your stuff. You're on. What are you on for Instagram, Facebook, everything? What, are they different names? What are they under? Because the Indiegogo is different than the regular movie name. Oh yeah. Um. So my Instagram is Zombie Barbie thirteen, and then my Facebook is just Rihanna Nicole, and then our six is six horror feature film. See, they're Not all different. I'm glad I yeah. asked. You. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how these like things you don't think about it until you get asked. I'm like, oh shit, I guess they are different. <laughs> yeah. Well, once I went to Indiegogo, I'm like, that's different. So I wonder if the others are different, you know? So mm -hmm. we look forward to not finding it. So I'm glad you said that. Uh Flash Tainment Productions. Uh, same here. I'll help share your project, Indiegogo. I believe that's um my buddy um who's making a, a fan film of himself Friday the 13th. So thank you for supporting. Thank you uh, so much. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much. I like to keep it short and sweet. That way I'm not bothering you. Um, thanks so much for coming on. We'll talk again. And when those parts come out, I'll definitely share it and I'll definitely help support you guys forever. Good luck awesome. on everything. Thank, thank you. And you too. Good. And thank yes. you so much. Yeah, You're especially welcome. for making that big change in your life. So congratulations yeah. for all of that too. Yeah. If you want to send me like some food in the mail, feel free. <laughs> <laughs>
little DoorDash or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, taco. Thanks, Ray. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for coming All on. All right, bye. So Thank you. Bye-bye.